We have a lot of people in attendance. This is wonderful. So my name is Janae Harvey, and I'm the Division Director over Family Wellbeing and Protection. Um, I am in the room tonight um, with Tracy. Would you like to go ahead and introduce yourself? Sure. I'm Tracy Schimmerhorn. I'm the co-founder of the Foster Squad. We also, uh, one of our presenters tonight will be Director Lori Frick. Um, would you go, like to say hi, Lori? Hi, good evening. Lori Frick, CPS Director. It's great to see all of you. And we're going to be kicked off tonight by our own Director Kelly Garcia. Thanks, Janae. I am really delighted. Wow, we've got 75 folks on. And for the first couple of rounds, we were really heavily kind of attended by our own team. And I'm now I'm seeing a lot of folks that I think are representing exactly the audience we wanted to see. Um, obviously, having our team here is really important because tonight is about hearing um, your feedback, most importantly. So it is our job to support the incredible work you do to serve Iowa's youth who are involved in child welfare. Um, and so we're going to give you some updates. We're going to do that in partnership with Tracy. Um, and then we're going to turn it over to you. And so uh, thank you so much for taking time this evening to be with us um, and to give us feedback so that we can really work to support you. Okay, so the very first place that we want to start, if you can go ahead to the, go to the next slide, is we want to acknowledge um, especially our foster parents and their families who are directly affected by the flood, the flooding that we've been having in our state. Um, this has obviously been a disaster um, in many of the counties. Um, HHS has been heavily involved in kind of round the clock responses. In fact, we have team members on the ground currently doing disaster snap or what we call DSNAP. Um, and uh, Four Oaks has been a tremendous committed partner as has been LSI for that part of the state. Um, over the weekend when this crisis first emerged, they helped us in reaching out to every foster family um, in those counties, um, checking on um, families, figuring out what provisions they needed and um, our foster parents who um, were taking care of kids placed in their home while also experiencing the stress of this natural disaster, just enormous gratitude to all of you um, for being in communication and for everything you've done. So thank you so much for your assistance and your patience um, during this disaster. We appreciate you. So let me hand it over um, to Director Frick, who's going to talk you through the various topics we are going to be covering this evening. And this will be what, we, what I call a co-pro or a collaborative promotion also with Four, Four Oaks and that Foster Squad this evening. All right. Thank you, Director Harvey. Lori Frick, CPS Director. Again, thank you for being here tonight. Uh, these are the topics that we're going to touch base on tonight around our Child Protective Services priorities. So the decrease uh, focus of uh, residential treatment placements, uh, foster and adoptive family resources, legislative changes. Of course, the foster squad, as uh, Director Harvey just said, is gonna, going to have a moment to talk tonight as well and some recognition of foster parents. And of course, the Real Hope Project, which is very exciting to see. So we will show you something um, that's, that's kind of heartwarming tonight. So that'll be exciting. Uh, the first thing I want to touch base on is um, on the next slide is around our workforce stabilization efforts that we are making. Um, we are um, in for and putting some efforts in making sure that our workforce is. I think we lost Lori, Janae. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and jump in. On this slide, the thing that we want to draw your attention to is there are five major areas of strategy that we are deploying within our child protective services work. Those five strategies are listed on the screen in front of you. Obviously, without a stable workforce, um, we cannot um, serve the children and family families well. Um, we need a professional, stable, well-informed workforce. So a number of our strategies fall in that area. We have goals around increased communication. And this town hall is an example 
of one of those commitments or our strategies to being more communicative, receiving feedback. Um, we have a broader strategy around ensuring that children are with families, whether children are with their own families, which is obviously our priority. Um, and if not there, then uh, also with foster families that increases the normalcy um, for kids who are in foster care. And we are unable to do that when um, kids are, are in group homes or shelter. The fourth major strategy is keeping kids with families. And the last strategy is about reducing trauma. So um, having more of a trauma-informed response to the work that we do. So one of our goals around um, reducing the number of youth in group care, an example of this is our pilot project um, is therapeutic foster care. And that is taking place in the Cedar Rapids service area. The goal is to stabilize kids in um, professionally trained foster parents' homes. Um, and these kids, many of them would have otherwise been in residential care, not living in a family with their own bedroom, you know, with a consistent caregiver. We are eight months into this 18 month trial. We currently have four um, foster homes and there are two beds in each of those foster homes. So eight, up to eight kids are being served in, in a home instead of being um, brought up in a residential setting. So we're continuing to look at that pilot and adjustments we may be making over time, but this is aligned with our broader effort of ensuring that kids have families stable caregivers. Another example of the work that we are doing to try and reduce the number of kids in group care is working more proactively with our RRTS, so our um, contractors who do the recruitment, retention, training, and support of foster parents. That is typically for Oaks, although we also um, have LSI um, team members in the western part of the state. They are going out and meeting with those youth who are living in those residential settings um, in order to learn about these kids, learn about them more than what they are on paper, learn about their strengths, their hobbies, what makes them happy, and so we can do better matching and figure out what are the resources and services that would be needed to help move those kids from residential living um, and help transition them safely into, um, into families. So shifting over to legislative changes, the big one that we wanted to talk about tonight with our foster families is that legislators approved a 5% increase um, in payment for licensed foster families. That new rate goes into effect this month and that payment will happen um, automatically. So you should see that rate adjustment at the next time that you receive your payment. Legislators at the same time also increased by 5% the payment for adoption subsidies for all adoptions that take place after July 1. So um, we are really happy that legislators heard directly from some foster parents. Um, they heard from providers who said, you know, this rate has not been adjusted in a very long time. Um, and legislators did provide um, this increased funding. Okay, we wanna give an update on what we call our foster care, child care assistance gap program. This was a program that was a one-time pilot program um, that we were able to run for almost a year. Um, and do the participants, okay, one of the things I wanted to flag for all of our foster parents is that this gap funding program is in effect till July 15th. So basically if you were have been a foster parent and a child care provider said, we're accepting CCA, so the child care assistance, but we're going to charge you more money than what CCA provides to us and you were given a bill for that. Um, those reimbursement request forms for that difference between the child care assistance and what your child care provider may have charged you, we need to re receive those reimbursement requests by no later than July 15th. So if you have 
those receipts and are looking for reimbursement, please get those forms to us. We need them in the, within the next week, so no later than July 15th. Um, if you have questions, please reach out to your worker. Okay, I'm going to ha hand over this part of the presentation um, to Four Oaks. Kai, am I right in believing that you'll be the presenter tonight? Sure. Hi, everybody. I'm Kai McGee with Four Oaks, um, and I see a couple of my colleagues on here. Um, I also see a lot of uh, our folks who we partner with around the state who are leading initiatives in your own part of the state to support foster and adoptive families. So I'm glad to see you all there. I want to touch a little bit on a couple of things that we have going on to try to provide support to foster and adoptive families across the state. New this year, um, and it just went uh, live in January is a mentoring program. So we have established a program where we've recruited mentors who are experienced foster and adoptive parents who are mentoring new foster and adoptive parents or they're mentoring families who are caring for um, a unique child or unique situation that they've not previously encountered. So for example, um, we may have um, a family who took a chance to decide to parent a teen. And although they've been foster parents for a while, um, we have connected them with a mentor who's experienced in parenting teens so that they can get that support unique to their situation. We currently have 29 mentors active across the state. Um, we've got about 59 families across the state using mentoring services. We would really appreciate um, spreading the word. So if you are a foster or adoptive parent or a kinship caregiver on here who would will be willing to consider being a mentor or you feel like you are in need of, of um, having a mentoring relationship, please feel free to reach out to um, your caseworker who can make that connection for you. The other thing I wanted to make sure that you guys are all aware of is that we do have um, foster care and adoption support groups active all over the state. Um, we have some virtual groups that meet routinely. We have groups that meet in person um, within your local area, wherever you're living. Some of them are very open to foster care, adoption, and kinship. Some of them might be more adoption specific, um, but please feel free to look at our calendar and find when some of those support groups are, are meeting in your area. And this is a great time for me to pause out for a moment and recognize that we have Tina from Kings and Queens who is one of those local supportive resources. So thanks, Tina, for being on here. And if you guys wouldn't mind just being patient with me for a second, I also would like to show you some additional resources that we have available. Um, and I would like to ask my uh, colleague, Krista, to walk you guys through our website so you can see some of the resources available to foster and adoptive families across the state. Krista, are you available and ready? You betcha. Uh, so will it let me share? Perfect, okay. Um, so the first place I want to point out, we have our website is iowafosteradoption.org. I apologize. This is the back side. It's no, 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 no. Taking a hot minute. Um, Valerie, you may want to mute yourself. There you go. All right. So on our website, uh, most of you are likely familiar with the um, training and contacts, all of our training pages where we list all of our trainings. In this current families section, I wanted to make sure I pointed out, we have a crisis help section, um, as well as information about getting a placement, making changes, um, and then our entire list of support groups. Uh, the most important thing I wanna show you that we have on here that we've built in the last year and are continuing to work on um, is our resources for families page. So we have a few resources on here and we've been working with Foster Squad to add some more resources to their page. So there's kind of a one-stop shop uh, the big thing that's different on our page um, and that we've been working to build up are these um, sections on different behavioral challenges. So if you notice, for example, we'll look at food challenges. Um, there's uh, specific um, YouTube videos. Some of them are articles, YouTube videos, um, documents that we have posted just for resources. 
Say, for example, you as a family um, taking a child who has some challenges with food. Uh, you know, it's going to take you, you know, maybe a week or two to get into a training um, or a month. And so here's a place that you can go to look up some information. Um, we have gone through these videos and documents and made sure that they're useful, helpful information. Uh, and so we're trying to get a better library of those um, trainings and uh, just general information uh, for you all to be able to view. So for example, under reactive attachment disorder, I've got an article here from Mayo Clinic uh, and a couple of YouTube videos that talk about reactive detachment disorder, um, the diagnosis, as well as um, you know services that you may want to look into um, and so on and so forth. There's a bunch of different uh, options on here for you to look into. Um, and they're quick. We try to keep them less than, you know, 59 or 15 minute videos. Um, so you can go on if, if this is a place you want to go on later at night when the kids go to bed and just look up some more information, you're you're welcome to. Additionally, we have a an adoption section on our website, uh, which also has a form on here that if you are adopting or you have adopted and you would like to reach out for support from an adoption support worker, uh, you can go on the adoption and permanency support referral form and sign up. And you can fill in your information as a self-referral, um, or you can refer a friend um, and fill in their information and we'll get a adoption support worker connected with you ASAP. As well, there's information on support groups um, for foster and for adoption um, and information about um, if you want to adopt or if you've already adopted as well, obviously on our website, we have our meet our kids section. Thanks, Krista. One of the things that I would like to mention really quickly is if you are um, a caregiver who is struggling with some challenging behaviors, maybe that you have not parented before um, or that they're just beginning to arise in your home, I want to make sure that all of you understand that we can provide some individual training to you, um, to your family on that particular behavior. We're certainly not um, behavioral experts. Uh, we're certainly not uh, experts on all of the different um, behaviors and challenges that children might present. Um, but we have access to a lot of experts across the state who um, we can put you in touch with. We can arrange for some individualized training. We can get training classes added to our schedule pretty quickly if that's a need, or we can just help you find resources to deal with. Um, some of the challenges that you might be experiencing, we would much rather um, provide you with some one-on-one -on -one training that might help you keep a child stable in your home as opposed to seeing kids bounce through um, from one home to another. So I wanted to make sure that you guys are all aware of that. If you feel like that's something that would benefit your family, um, please make sure that you let your caseworker know who can work with Krista and the rest of our team to get that training provided to you to deal with whatever unique challenges and circumstances you are currently navigating through. Um, I do also want to call attention to the fact that we have um, what is called a stability grant, um, which is something that has been newly offered by the state uh, starting in the previous July, where um, families who have adopted or achieved subguardianship with the child and, and reached permanency in that way um, are eligible to apply for a $100 stability grant to cover expenses um, or items that might otherwise not be covered under the subsidy and also remind all of our adoptive families to take advantage of the um, increased number of paid respite days available to adoptive families. Um, that number increased over this last year from five to 10 days of paid respite, um, which is a very positive change. And so I think that's all that I wanted to make sure that we reminded everybody about. Thank you, Krista, for showing us the website and I'll turn it over to whoever's next. Hey, we're gonna have Tracy as our next presenter. All right, and I'm going to talk about Foster Squad resources, well, our resource page, I should say. So we're tag teaming here with Four Oaks. Um, as you saw on their page, they have a lot of great training resources. Um, and what we have found is that there's a lot of great nonprofits throughout Iowa who are doing 
who are providing support to foster parents in different pockets of the state, but it's hard to find out who's doing what and where. So we've worked with Four Oaks and we've worked with all of these other um, nonprofits throughout the state to create a page. Are you gonna bring that up? Yes, yeah. Um, Claire's gonna bring up our page so you can see it quick. Um, so we're sorting out all the resources that are provided to foster parents. We know that you guys could use the help. We wanna help you find it easier. You don't have time to Google this and to see what's available in your area. So we have a one-stop shop on our webpage that will allow you to see if there's a support group in your area. If you have a group that provides um, a care kit or um, getting a mouse, hold on, here we go. So if there's maybe, okay. <laughs> As I scroll through very quickly, there are some clothing closets listed here um, throughout the state. It'll tell you where they are. Um, we also have support groups and training. A lot of these nonprofits will offer training that is approved for your foster care licensing credit. So you can check these out. Some of them are in person, some of them are virtual. So even if they're not in your area, you may be able to attend through Zoom. Um, there's different groups that provide activity scholarships. Um, they help with uh, just, just different one-off needs that you have. There's a lot of great groups doing a lot of great things in Iowa. So I, I recommend you come out here and see what they can do. Here are some haircuts and senior photos. Um, There's some shoes you can get through Kohl's. There's some stuffed animals. Like I said, Iowa really is blessed to have these nonprofits helping us out. So um, take, take a look at this. If you know of other resources that exist that aren't on our website, we wanna get everything out here. And then we're also trying to find ways to make it so it's super easy for you to come out and find what you're looking for. Um, so this will change over time that if you're in you know, Iowa City, you can put in that you're in Iowa City and it will show you what's available in that area. But right now we just have it by what the actual resource is. So we're gonna open this up at the end for some suggestions, but all of the nonprofits, and I know there's quite a few that are on here tonight because they all said they were gonna call in. Um, we wanna know how we can support you. So we'll ask for you to, to share any ways that you feel like you could use some additional support from, from the nonprofits. And then obviously Four Oaks and HHS would love to hear that as well. Uh, the other thing we were talking about is a lot of times you guys have one-off needs that aren't going to be able to fit into those lists. And so as you have things that come up, we don't want you to feel like you're alone. So reach out to us and, and let us know that you need support in a certain way. Um, we had a we had a mom who thought she was gonna get some, some funding for childcare and wasn't able to, and we were able to work with Four Oaks and some other groups to help cover some of the out-of-pocket costs for her. We wanna help you guys out. So please reach out to these organizations that exist and, and let us know how we can help you. And then the last very exciting thing we're going to talk about, and I think Claire's got some pictures here, is Operation Santa 2024, because it's July, so let's start, talk, let's start talking about Christmas now. Um, but for those of you who are in the Des Moines area, we did an event here at the Blank Park Zoo where we had gifts available for foster kiddos that had been purchased from their wish list. Santa was here, and it was a safe space at the Blank Park Zoo to come with foster parents, bio parents, kinship families to come and have Christmas together and just get to see the Grinch and get some books and some stuffed animals. And we found out that there are a lot of other nonprofits doing something similar throughout the state. So with Four Oaks, we have partnered with all of those nonprofits and there's over 20 of them. who will be hosting parties throughout all of Iowa in December so that every kid in foster care or kinship care in Iowa has the opportunity to go to a party like this and receive gifts off of a wish list. So. I think the date I was told today was, I want to say it's October, Krista said, they're going to, Four Oaks will be sending out an email to all foster parents asking you to fill out a wish list for the kiddos who are in your care. And then we are going to find members of the community to buy gifts for those kids. So we're going to ask you to fill out a wish list. $50 this is what we think everybody will spend. And we want kids to get a brand new gift bought for them by someone else. And we're going to take a little bit of that Christmas shopping burden off your plate and give you a fun place to celebrate Christmas. We hope bio families can come with you, um, kinship families can come. We really want it to be an opportunity for everybody. There you go, October 15th is the day that that link will be sent out for you to fill out a wish list. Um, but we're gonna have a really cool story here in Iowa of how every child in foster care, kinship care, and adoptive child had the opportunity to get a gift bought for them and had the opportunity to come to a really cool party. So 
I hope you'll be a part of it. And if you know people who want to be a part of it, let us know. Okay. Um, so tonight we have something very exciting. Um, this is our portion of the presentation, which is our foster parent recognition. Um, I am so excited for this. Um, this is about partly us building kind of a culture of gratitude and making sure that we take time to thank people who are on this journey with us and doing this incredible work. And we sent out a survey to our CPS staff and said, hey, is there a foster parent who just stands out to you for doing remarkable things? And we received a huge response. It was clear that our social workers really enjoyed this nomination process and they wrote in wonderful things um, about so many of our foster parents. Um, and some of the social workers then reached out and said, so when are we doing this for our adoptive parents too? We have amazing adoptive parents that we get to work with. Um, so that'll be forthcoming at the right time. But tonight is our chance to show, show some gratitude to our foster parents. And so what we have done is we had so many nominations that we were able to break them into our five major service areas. So the place we're gonna start with tonight is in the Western part of our state. Here are the names of the foster parents who've been nominated by those social workers that work with them. Um, so I think many of you are in attendance tonight. You can hopefully find your name up on the screen. And what we're gonna do, would you like to say anything, Tracy? No, I'll let you, I'll let you draw and, and share. Okay, so this is part of our collaborative promotion. Um, Foster Squad, after I draw one of the nominees out of this vase, this repurposed flower <laughs> vase, um, I'm going to read your name and hopefully read some things that were said about you. And then Foster Squad has their own gift that they are going to be sending your way. So let's see who is our inaugural winner from the Western service area is Vicki and Justin Schrock. Are you with us this evening? I really hope you are. Um, one of the things that, oh, this is a very long nomination. This, this social worker said many, many things about you. Um, but one of the things that was really touching to this social worker is um, these foster parents took in a medically fragile baby and have gone way above um, to ensure that this, this baby's special needs um, were met, including a variety of medical appointments and um, really just ensured that all of her um, hour by hour, day by day um, needs were met. So um, Vicki and Justin, um, thank you for all that you ha have done um, for, for Dahlia. And we want to um, just acknowledge the tremendous, um, all the commitments that you have made um, in, your, in your personal life to ensure her care. So um, thank you. And we see some applause happening in the chat. Um, yeah, and we're gonna, the Foster Squad's gonna send each of the names that Janae draws a $25 gift card to Amazon. I know that's not enough to say thank you, but we do want you to know that we appreciate the work that you're doing and all of you really, like we were blown away that this was the number of names that came in and nominations. So thank you to all of you for the hard work you're doing and a special congratulations to those who are getting drawn tonight. Okay, what service area do we have up next? Okay, we're moving on to the Northern part of the state. So can you close the chat box real quick so we can see all the names? Okay, so hopefully if you are from, oh, definitely some of these foster parents are with us tonight. I've seen some of their names um, up on the screen in front of us. How about you draw? Okay, I'll draw and then you can read. That'll be Oops. great. All right. Naomi Cadwaller. I gotta find her. 
Let me see. Northern. Oh, here we go. All right. So Naomi, you're the social worker says you've just been wonderful by being a support to the family. You've gone above and beyond um, to ensure that children are getting additional visits. Um, and you were really inclusive, bringing the parents to different medical appointments. Your support goes above and beyond the average foster parent. And the social worker working with you is just really impressed what you do every single day. So some really strong, positive language um, coming from the social worker working with you. Thank you. Naomi. Okay, next up is what service area? Now we're at Eastern. Okay, we're moving over to the Eastern part of the state. Okay, let's close that chat so we can see everybody's name. Caitlin and Benjamin Beck. Okay, let's see what your social worker said about you. Your social worker who's worked with you has said, I have worked with Caitlin and Ben on a few different occasions that they've taken placement of a handful of kiddos on my caseload at one point in, in time or another. Caitlin is fantastic about sending weekly updates via email, which I always appreciate. She is always flexible when trying to schedule visits and she's always willing to go the extra mile for the department as well as any of the kiddos that, is, that are in Caitlin and Ben's care. So thank you for all you have done and you will be getting an Amazon gift card. Okay, we are going to Cedar Rapids service area. We have, we have, as you can see, a few individuals who are nominated multiple times. I think Valerie and Donald, you are the winner getting your name submitted three different times by different team members. And that worked because that's who I drew. They must be in here three times. No way. <laughs> okay. Okay. Which entry to read? Okay. I have multiple to choose from. I will choose one. But Valerie and Donald have been longtime foster parents and supporters of other foster parents and the entire foster parent process. Over the years, I have placed many kids there during my time as a CPW and supervisor, and they always do a great job of working with biological families, providers, and the HHS workers. They ensure kids make all their necessary appointments and they treat each kid as if they were a part of their own family. We never have any concerns with their care for kids or the way they interact with what with anyone on cases. Valerie and Donald have taken kids that others have passed up on or others couldn't quite handle, and they've done it with no hesitation or question. They are always seen in the community as great supporters of the foster care system and child welfare system and do what is necessary for kids. Um, thank you. Hey, our final service area this evening is in the Des Moines service area. All right, we have Brant and Amy Hambley. Okay. Brant and Amy um, worked exceptionally well with the foster child on my caseload. They made sure to get him to all appointments, offered to provide transportation to the visits, and were exceptionally communicative. They obviously care very much about the children in their care, and boy, does it show. Okay. So, um, what I want to let all of you know is we are going to continue um, talking about these nominations. We continue to get input from the social work case managers, and I believe we're going to continue to do these drawings. So if your name was not selected tonight, your name is still in that flower base, and um, we are going to do another town hall two months um, from July. So that's September, you will get notified about that. So I really hope that you're able to join us for that um, town hall. We have two more um, items for tonight. The first is we wanna talk about the Real Hope Project and we have a clip that we're gonna show you tonight. Um, the Real Hope Project, for those of you who don't know, 
um, is an entity who comes out and they spend a day with um, older kids who are in foster care waiting for a forever family. And they make a short uh, video of them that really humanizes them and show their hobbies and their interests. And again, we really trying to spotlight the need for all kids um, to have a family. So we're gonna take the next three minutes to watch this short video. And then we're gonna go into um, the conversation time with people who've joined us tonight for some question and answer. So we are gonna show the video of, who are we gonna watch today? Joey? Mm -hmm. Okay, you are about to meet Joey. Some of my favorite animals are birds and lizards. My favorite birds are bald eagles. My favorite lizard is bearded dragon. They're pretty much hard and tough. I've been on a farm before and did a lot of things. I will always feed the cows, get the eggs from the chickens, chase the chickens around, and the chickens will chase us. Horses like getting pet, like brush, and cows. They just lay down, be lazy. I like parrots, I like bald eagles, I like robins, I like food chicken. <laughs> when I'm around animals, I feel happy. My friends describe me as um, nice. My friends me like going out to eat, um, playing video games, just talking about random stuff. I'm a nice friend and I like playing around. I'm playing games. My favorite family will, will look like playing video games with me, playing around, go to the park, going on field trips, going camping, going swimming, and that's pretty much it. One day I hope that be a big brother. Family is important so we can go on trips and go do a lot of stuff together and have fun and get loved. My name is Joey, I'm 14, this is Mario. Hey, thank you um, for sitting, that, sitting um, through that video, that, that real hope video of Joey. Obviously, uh, a long-term family for Joey has a number of animals. Um, that they are taking care of because he looks like he is ready to help. Um, so the uh, last place that we want to end is having conversation with you. Um, so those of you who've come tonight, we're hoping to hear directly from you what challenges you're facing and if there are any resources you think we can help you find. 